Good afternoon, we are on the shore of the Hauraki Gulf, looking at the cliffs here at Stanmore Bay. But the cliffs that we see here are very much like many of the cliffs around all the coast of the Auckland area and the Waitamata Harbour and in the Hauraki Gulf. They're made of this Waitamata sandstone. The cliffs actually consist of alternating layers of sands and muds that were laid down on the floor of the, the deep sea about 20 million years ago. So if we look at, up close at this, we can see that the sandstones are more resistant to erosion and stick out than the mudstones, which are eroding back. And here we are alternating sand, mud, sand, mud, sand, mud, sand, mud. These sediments were deposited on the floor of the deep sea in a sedimentary basin that was about 1,000 to 2,000 metres deep at that time over the Auckland region. So if you can imagine, we've got this area of deep sea and land eroding up in the north. So these sand units here are grains that have all eroded off that northland land area, been carried down into the sea up there around the Kaipara and collected in shallow water. They gradually built up a pile that wasn't terribly lithified and every so often there might be an earthquake that suddenly set that whole pile of soft sand in motion flowing down the slope of the basin. And this slurry of sand, mud and water in a turbulent flow is called a turbidity current and it flows down the slopes and when it got to the floor of the basin it would spread out and deposit a layer of sand and each one of these sand layers was brought down by one of these turbidity currents. Okay, so therefore each sand bed here was de deposited in a matter of hours. Almost an instant in time, in geological time, is represented by each of these sand layers, whether they're only a couple of centimetres thick or 10, 20, 30 metre thick. Each one of those was deposited almost instantaneously in geological time. But the muds in between have been deposited much more slowly. So in storms on land, mud is carried into the sea in suspension and it goes out into the sea and then slowly that suspended mud will fall to the sea floor and accumulate extremely slowly on the sea floor in between the times when these sand slurries or turbidity currents came down. So while the sands were deposited almost instantaneously, the rate of accumulation of those muds at this sort of depth was around about five to 10 centimetres accumulation per thousand years. So that gives us a clue as to how long it took for this cliff section to build up on the sea floor. So if we stand back and look at the, just the mud layers and ignore the sand and add their thickness together, I would say we've got about two metres total of mud stone here. At a, say 10 centimetres per thousand years, that's 20,000 years that it took for this to accumulate. So this is the sea floor building up and it would have been almost flat lying and horizontal as it accumulated. And since it was deposited, it's had maybe another 800 meters of sands and muds on top of it, which have compressed these layers and hardened them into the sandstones and mudstones we've got today. After 20 million years ago, the Auckland region has been progressively coming up in a number of pulses and the Sediment, sedimentary rocks above us have been progressively eroded off. So that 800 metres of sand and mudstone that was above us has now eroded away and we're seeing into these older, more compressed and harder rocks. But during that uplift in this area, the layers have remained horizontal or flat. But in other places they've been tilted by different forces and we will go and have a look at some of these tilted or, or folded forces and wonder why or how they came to be like that. Here in the cliff we've got several thicker sand beds or sandstone beds that we can see. Now, as the sandstones were being deposited from this turbulent flow that was flowing over here, the denser and larger grains would drop out of that flow first. And so at the base of some of these sandstones, that grain size here is a medium to coarse sand. And as I go up, as it's being passed over, the strength of that flow is waning, and so the sand grains being left behind get finer and finer as we go up. So in the bottom here, it's coarse sand, and as we're going up through medium sand, it's quite fine grain sand at the top. And we can use that grading in the grain size in these sandstone beds to tell us which way was up. So if this bed had been completely turned over, then the coarse grains would be on the top. 
so we can use the coarse grains to fine grains or the grading to tell us which way was the top of the bed and which way was the underside. And we may see that when we get some beds that have been folded or partly turned over. Well here's a, an interesting place in the cliff where we can see a fracture is cutting right through the rocks and you can see that the rocks on either side of the fracture don't match up. We call this a fault and there's been displacement along this fracture plane. This bed, that one, that one and that one, these four sandstone beds match up quite nicely with the ones up here. So that's the displacement, it's the far side here has gone down by about three or four metres and we get many faults cutting through the white matar sandstones around Auckland. So in the cliff just along, a little bit further along at this east end of Stanmore Bay, we find a fantastic fold in the cliff. Now, in some of these layered sedimentary rocks, we can sometimes get compression that can compress those rocks and from being horizontal, they can be folded up. So if they're folded up, it's into a, an up fold or an anticline. That compression can sometimes cause them to be folded down. And so we get a syncline. In this instance, it's neither an anticline nor a syncline because it's a fold that's on its side. So we call that a, a recumbent fold. So if we look up in the cliff now, here you can see beautiful layers at the base that are horizontal, swinging up and folded back on top of it, uh, up under the trees there. You can see the tight centre of that fold uh, two thirds of the way up the cliff. There's not many places around Auckland or even New Zealand where we see these recumbent folds as big as this one. So what a great place to come to today and try and figure out how it was formed like this. Now we're up close at the base of this lovely fold on its side and we've got a, a coarse bed here that's about a metre and a half thick and we can use that same grain size fining upwards or grading to tell us which way up this bed is now with respect to when it was deposited. We look up here We've got angular pebbles, etc., of that up here, and it's getting finer up to sands down here, medium to coarse sands. So in fact, it's fining downwards instead of upwards. So clearly, this is the base of this bed, and this is the top. It's upside down. How can that be? Why don't we walk along here, see if we can figure this out a bit. So we've come along that coarse bed, and here it's folding back on itself again. So it's folded back on itself twice. So in fact, this lower part we see down in this coarse bed here, even coarser cobbles in here, it's grading up, getting finer going upwards here. So this is up the right way. It's folded over and it's upside down there. Then it folds back and it'll be up the right way, up the top. So let's try to understand how these folds were formed. As the rocks are hardened, as more and more rocks accumulate on top of it, they progressively get hardened. So part way, of the burial, those rocks become quite compressed but they're still quite plastic. So at that stage you can compress them, you can fold them and they'll stay together as beds. As you get deeper they get harder and when you compress them they get brittle and they'll just fracture. So it looks like these beds here were at that plastic or ductile stage when they were folded. And probably these folds were formed within a slide, a submarine slide. So periodically on the slopes of the sea floor some of the seafloor will give way and slide down, like we get on land in a, in a slide. Uh, the slide down, maybe the front of it got stuck behind something and it folded over itself a couple of times as it was sliding down. So you have a look at these folds here at uh, Stanmore Bay and try and figure out which direction the slide was going. Well, it's getting dark so it's time to head home, but uh, if you live in Auckland or are visiting Auckland, you can come to any cliff section like this on the east coast or even the north coast of the Manukau Harbour and you'll see exactly these kinds of rocks and in them you'll see all sorts of things. And remember these rocks were deposited on the floor of the deep sea about 20 million years ago and have been uplifted and eroded right down since then. And only in the last 200,000 years have the volcanoes of Auckland come up through them and been deposited over the top of these old white matar sandstones.